So the full patch notes for patch 5.3 have been released, and as always, this means that now we finally get our first glimpse into the full ramifications of the job changes coming with this patch. So let's strap in and get right into it. So first off is the Marauder Warrior changes, and so I'm kind of feeling like my video is almost validated by this because I made a very long video, it was like almost an hour and a half, where I would go into the warrior and I'd go and be like showing this is my issue with here and like showing actual gameplay footage of the issue. And so I am so excited to list off these changes because I really do think that these are going to go a super long way to helping out the warrior. So first off is Berserk, now has the additional effect of extending Storm's eye duration by 15 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds. So two big things here is Berserk is the skill that allows a warrior to basically have all of their attacks crit and direct hit. And this, to most people who've been playing warrior at max level are gonna be like, wait, Berserk? That is the skill that turns into inner release, which gives you the five fell cleaves along with the upheaval and the dash spam all at once free of beast gauge charge and guarantees all hit things be direct and critical hits. And so every time you pop this skill now, you don't need to worry about Storm's eye potentially falling off during that time. And so I think that is such a huge quality of life change. Unbelievably so good and so necessary in my opinion. And then the next thing is that, and this is a little bit more subtle, is that it says that the duration to a maximum of 60 seconds. It was 30 seconds up until now, and so we have literally doubled the duration of how long our Storm's Eye buff can be up. And so this is just, oh my god, this is such good news to me. I am so incredibly happy at this point. This is brilliant. Now the next thing is that we have Mithril Tempest changes, and so Mithril Tempest is going to be part of our AoE rotation, and so it says the combo bonus extends Storm Side duration by 10 seconds to a maximum of 30 seconds has been changed to extend Storm Side duration by 30. Yeah, you heard me right, 30 seconds to maximum 60 seconds. So one of my critiques that I brought up in the Warrior video was how it can be really annoying during an AoE pull where we have that Storm's Eye buff and it only lasts a total duration of 30 seconds and honestly I cannot tell you how many times I have had like 25 or 23 Storm Gauge left on my Warrior and then I'm running in to try and make a pull and it just falls off because 20 seconds when you're in a dungeon, when you're doing something like I'm immediately thinking about like some of the, s not even those, I, I like literally if you look at Am Academia Ander, that dungeon, but the distance between the first boss and the next pack of mobs that you need to pull is very long and Storm's Path, if you only have like 20 seconds left, is going to fall off. And so now having this not only boosted up by 30 seconds but have that 60 second cap means that there is so much less likely of a chance to do that. This is huge in my mind. This actually makes me really, really want to pick up my warrior again. These two changes alone. But wait, there's some more. Is that Storm's Eye now extends Storm's Eye duration by 30 seconds to maximum 60 seconds. So that's just a limit. Now inner release, the additional effect. Oh, I guess that it brought up the inner release in itself. But inner release and Berserk is kind of the same thing. So it's just the same thing as Berserk is it's going to extend Storm's Eye duration by 15 seconds to maximum 60 seconds. And then this one is so important. <laughs> Descent Flash no longer requires a target party member to execute. Thank god, I am so sick of that. That is such a huge change. I am actually really excited about this. Because you think about it, and let's say that you are out in the open world and you don't have like your chocobo out, because sometimes warrior players don't have chocobos out. Sometimes most players don't have chocobos out when they're open world grinding, oddly enough. Uh, but anyhow, it's just like you don't need to worry about that anymore. And I think that that's so, so, so good. Because it's just like, let's say that you're doing a really large pull, and let's say that you're dashing ahead and that you leave people behind. Not the best practice, but you know, we've all done it. We've all done it at least once or twice in the past. Let's not joke around. And so if we're ahead of the group, now we have a way to sustain ourselves until our healer madly dashes to us and curses out our name, and then we can keep ourselves alive. I am so happy about this change. Like seriously, we needed this so bad. The next change just comes to the Gunbreaker. And so is this as much of a change as the warrior? No. 
but I think that this is still going to be helpful, which it is a brutal shell, has the cure potency increased by 150 to 200. And then the second part of it is the effect duration of Brutal Shell is that it's going to be increased from 10 seconds duration to 30 seconds duration, and that this berry effect can now be refreshed. So two things with this is that we, through the Gunbreakers 1, 2, 3 rotation, their second ability, Brutal Shell, will, or always has, done part healing, 150% healing, and then an equivalent effect in shield. And so that was 150 healing, 150 shield, in total for a total potency of mitigation of roughly a 300 or no exactly 300 when we say roughly but what we have here is now the cure potency has been increased by 150 to 200 so instantly you get a bigger burst of heal but now your barrier also is going to be 200 now and so your net gain is from 300 to 400 potency of mitigation in this and that is actually pretty significant when you consider the gunbreaker is going one two three literally through an entire fight. That's a lot of mitigation added, and I think that this is going to go a long way to people considering Gunbreaker a more of a, uh, how to say it, long-term mitigation or drawn-out support uh, or mitigation type tank, which I think it, that's always been my kind of opinion on it, is it's just like it doesn't have the burst or the pizzazz of something like the Warrior where they are combining Thrill of Battle with like Nascent Flash and Equilibrium just bursting their health up, but it's been more of a slow methodological kind of... Um, mitigation of what's coming in essentially so i think that this goes a long way but the effect duration increase from 10 to 30 seconds i think is actually really important too because what a gunbreaker does is when they use heart of stone one of the things is that yeah it reduces the damage taken by the target but if you are an off tank gunbreaker is that it will also take whatever barrier you have from brutal shell which is now going to be this 200 potency barrier and it's going to apply it to the target and people are going to be like oh is that really the biggest thing in the world no but you know what it is death by a thousand cuts and when you consider that heart of stone can be applied every 25 seconds to the target for essentially free and nothing i think that this is really good i think that this is actually really good change and will go a long way to helping gunbreakers a lot next one is the monk changes so we have perfect balance has its recast time lowered from 120 to 90 seconds and so this allows the monk to basically go free reign on any of their combo abilities with basically reckless abandon and not worry about doing their proper change change chains and so this i think is gonna go a way to help monk players a fair bit because it just allows them to be a little bit more fluid a little bit more flexible if they want to burst with a particular set of skills they can therefore go and do that and i think that that's going to be really helpful next up is form shift has the additional effect of extending the duration of grease lightning no longer requires the curl form and so this one actually took me a little bit to understand initially what form shift does now is that it's gonna not only take your current form and put it into the next in the sequence but what you're gonna have is that it's also going to extend grease lightning duration to its absolute maximum and now it's not gonna be reliant on any particular form in order to do that so again, this alongside Perfect Balance makes it so that the Monk is a little bit more fluid and a little less rigid. Because I, I think that when it comes to some of the Monk playstyles, that some of them that I've talked to at least already have really said that this goes a long way to them being a little bit more fluid and able to adapt and adjust in various situations a little bit easier. Which I think is a good thing. Again, really big quality of life adjustments, but I do think that Perfect Balance will also have a pretty good potency change. Now comes up the bard changes. Now comes up the bard changes. So these changes, before I even start listing them out, we don't know what the final numbers are gonna be. And so I want everyone to try and um, look at it very, not necessarily optimistically, but don't swing immediately to pessimism. We need to see what those final numbers are. And so what we have is Sidewinder is getting its potency when the target is suffering for both Caustic Bite and Storm Bite has been increased from 300 to 350. And in reality, you should only be using the skill when the target does have both of your damage over time effects on it. So what this really equates to is 50 more potency every minute since Sidewinder is on a 60 second cooldown timer. The next thing is that Refulgent Arrow has its potency increased from 330 to 340, which is a fairly decent 
increase. Maybe it's not as much as we might have hoped because it's only 10 potency. But what this is, it, it'll make more sense when I talk about burst start shot. But what it is, is it means that every time you use one of your basic abilities, because with the bard, you don't really have a rotation. Refulgent arrow is what you can get as either an RNG proc or you use barrage to get a refulgent arrow proc instantly. But what it is, is it's just upticking the consistency of the bard's personal DPS a touch, just a little touch, but this is going to impact every single shot of Refulgent Arrow. And now the second part of that is Burst Shot, which is your flat out basic ability that you're going to be spamming over and over and over and over again between all of your procs as the bard is Burst Shot. And its potency was also increased by only 10, but I say only 10 because I think that initial reactions is, is this enough to get the bard over the line and really bring it into line with things like the dancer at high end and the machinist? We're going to have to really see. P Napkin math is so far saying that, yeah, it is bringing it up a little bit and that it's equivalent to something like nine extra burst shots in a, a set period of time. I'm not sure what the set period of time was. I think it might have been uh, every two minutes or something like that. But the point of the matter is we will not really know what the full ramifications of this are it, or is until we actually have a training dummy. And because we can extrapolate like the raid DPS of what is Battle Voice going to do, what's Army's Payon going to do, what is Minuet, Mage of the Battle. But what we can do is like figure out on a training dummy like okay what is our new baseline self personal normal and based on that we can get a better picture but we're gonna get more of that tomorrow likewise but i i think that everyone needs to just uh hang on until someone does the math but it is looking like it is gonna be a decent increase just because it's so consistent of an increase the next thing is the machinist with not a buff not a nerf but just a change to the wording which the description of Hypercharge now states that the overheat effect only applies to machinist actions. And so what this overheat ability does is that basically it turns your 1, 2, 3 rotation is that it can increase their potency by 20 per action. And again, Ultimate Machinist Guide is coming out soon. I'm going to tell you why that is good for leveling, but why you're never going to really be doing that because you're going to be using Heat Blast Reality, which... Uh, I mean, does it get increased from like 2 and potency to 220? Yeah. But this is just another thing that I think goes away to help people understand what is actually going on. Next up is the summoner, and this was the one that scared me the most, but I'm just going to say what it is. So, Tri Disaster potency has been reduced from 300 to 150, and I realize that is a halving of potency, and everyone is probably like, Oh my god, that's huge. And in a vacuum, that's absolutely huge. But what I, this is the only nerf for the record. But what I can say is that this number one doesn't change the rotation. So things like my ultimate summoner guide, if you have been watching that and if you follow that, your rotation is the exact same. It's not going to suddenly change because of this. But what this also is bringing is that Tri Disaster is something that you get at the start of the fight. You get whenever you go into one of your trances, so such as you go into Dreadworm Trance or you go into Phoenix Trance, you get it to refresh. And so essentially you are getting it every two minutes, you're getting three of them. So that means every two minutes you are going to be losing a total of 450 potency. Which, if I am being super honest, does sound like a lot. It totally does. But if we're comparing things that we can lose throughout the rotation, like let's say that you are spamming a lot more Ruin 4 in... I mean, a Ruin 3. My apologies. Or no, Ruin 2. <laughs> Oh, it's one of those mornings. But let's say that you're spamming a lot more Ruin 2 than you should be instead of using your proper Ruin 3. That is going to be overall a lot more of a potency loss than just this. I mean, obviously this is going to be significant. This is going to be felt. But based upon the paper napkin math and the simulations and so the math gurus and the balance discord already hashing it out, the summoner is still going to be like top three in terms of DPS, as well as their utility is still absolutely top tier. The rotation is not changing, and I am definitely looking forward to continuing to play the summoner. This is not going to take away the crown, in my humble opinion, anytime soon. If you are a confident and good summoner, this will not phase you. This is it annoying, yeah, but mind you, when you bring so much to the table, it, it's about time. I think that we got a little bit of a gentle love tap and. Compared to the things that I was thinking it could have been, 
This really is a gentle love tap. Just focus on your rotation, get things down, do d minimize your movement, and think more about like your positioning as almost a black mage. And so if you're casting less of your rune twos and more of your rune threes in place with the full cast bar, you're gonna definitely still be getting a whole lot. And I think that this change, while felt, it's not going to be as devastating as it could have been. My my brain was instantly thinking, oh my god, they're going to like rip down the edgy actions, or they're going to remove revive from us, or they are going to nerf Phoenix significantly. Thankfully, I think that this went the kindest of the rest that it could have gone. Next up is the Scholar, and the Scholar just has a basic MP reduction on their AoE heal from 1300 to 1100 MP, so that's saving every AoE heal 200 MP. Do I think that this is the craziest change? No, but you know what, as someone that's played Scholar, if you're gonna give me free MP or you're gonna make my MP go slightly, do you really think I'm gonna look a gift horse in the mouth? No, I am not. Nope, 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 nope. I will take every bit of MP, every bit of whatever you can give me, because alternatively this means Piety is even less relevant on Scholar. And mind you, with the White Mage basically being able to flat out gut Piety from all their gear without wincing, I'm not going to complain about getting more MP. Now let's talk about the Astrologian changes, which is the biggest changes in my opinion in the patch, and makes me honestly want to play the Astrologian more, I should say that right off the bat. This is coming with a positive valence. Some of these changes might seem negative because there are some adjustments. So let's get right into it. Light speed. The effect of reduces the MP cost for any spells cast by 50% has been removed. So now this means light speed will not reduce the MP cost for your spells anymore. And this is why I preface it with saying that there's good things because that is instantly off the bat gonna get people going, oh my god, what did they do? Don't worry, hang tight. So Helios has had the MP cost reduced from 900 to 700. So that is going to be their basic AoE heal, the one that doesn't apply the, the uh, what do you call it, a heal over time or the barrier. And so that is significant reduction. Benefic 2, which is like their Cure 2 equivalent, has its MP, MP cost reduced from 900 to 700. Again, really, really big. And Draw has had the additional effect of restores 8% of maximum MP added. And so every time, every 30 seconds, when you're using the Draw ability and getting one of your cards, boom, 8% MP. And likewise, now everyone is probably seeing, oh, so they've taken the light speed MP buff and they've kind of like washed it through the rest of the kit. And that's my interpretation of it at least. And then the next thing is that Aspected Benefit has the MP cost when under the effect of Diurnal Sect has been reduced from 500 to 400. And so Aspected Benefit is how you will go at applying either the heal over time when you're in the Diurnal Sect or the shield in Nocturnal Sect. And so Diurnal Sect has always been lower cost than the shield. And so we are seeing your ability it, essentially it acts like a white mage regeneration or regen regen and so that has been lowered to 400 mp which i think is a lot easier of a cost to swallow when you're talking about something that you rinse and repeat and apply but remember that the astrologian also gets the added benefit of having a small little burst of a heal at the very start whereas the white mage's regen isn't quite the same now let's talk about the Nocturnal Sect where it is a barrier. And so its MP cost was reduced by 200 from 900 to 700. And so Aspect of Benefit when you are talking about the shield effect is one of the highest quality of life shields I have. Like when I'm pugging and I'm going into a fight that I'm not super familiar with all the tank busters and that, I find it so much easier to prepare for a tank buster as an astrologian with the shield because you can instantly cast it then boom it's on the target and so now 200 less mp means that this is a lot more spammable and it's going to be much less of a burden on your kit and so i think that this is going to be actually really really big especially because you are seeing some groups pair up a white mage with an astrologian i think that this is going to go a very long way to helping them with that so aspected helios and so unlike the normal helios this is the one that will either apply the aoe shield or the AoE heal over time effect. Its MP cost has been reduced from 1000 to 800, and so again, you're saving 200 MP. Now, Combust 2 is going to be the damage over time effect that we can apply to targets as Astrologian, and its MP cost has been reduced to 500, from 500 to 400. So again, 
a lot of reductions here. And so that entire section boils down to if you're an astrologian, now you have a lot more freedom to slot this particular abilities that you want to slot in, such as, I mean, materia. So you can now go a lot heavier into things like direct hit or crit or determination. Whereas I know, at least for myself and other astrologians that I talked to, is that they were like, I feel like I need to slot in a lot more piety than other healers because the white mage basically doesn't run out of <laughs> energy like ever. They are literally the energizer bunny. And so for the astrologian, this is going to be such a huge difference in my humble opinion. So I am going to skip sleeve draws change for now and I will get back to it in a moment. But let's talk about horoscope. And so the healing effect can now be triggered when the effect horoscope or horoscope helios expires. So what this means is that essentially, let's say that you trigger the horoscope ability and that you can either trigger it to have the horoscope Helios, which basically means that you added an extra effect onto it and it heals just a touch more. I say a touch, it's, it's a significant amount more. But now what happens is that it won't just fall off without doing anything. You're actually going to get that burst at the end, which is very nice because it's kind of like the Scholar's X cog where it's just like if it was wasted and didn't like trigger at the end, it was kind of disappointing. And so now this is just an extra quality of life to make sure that, hey, if you forget about the horoscope ability, at least you're going to be getting something out of it, even if you forget to trigger it. And then neutral sect is that when neutral sect is executed while nocturnal sect is active, the healing over time effects of both aspected benefic and aspected helios can now be stacked. And so what you're having here is that essentially now you don't need to worry so much about the overlap or how to say it. What you have is that these healing over time effects now are allowed to kind of coexist whereas before you might be worried about like oh is this healing over time effect going to overlap this one or is this other one not going to register because i already have one on you don't need to worry about that anymore you are going to be getting both of those effects at once and so this is actually a pretty good buff because it's like now you can kind of make sure that you can always like double up if you really need that much aoe healing which i think will go a ways to make the astrologian a little bit more competitive if you think about it a little bit is that now you can just stack all of these healing over time effects and bam, that's a ton of HP per second. And now let's talk about sleeve draw. And so I'm gonna first just say out what the changes are. So it says the effect of this action has been completely revamped <laughs> off the first line, yay. And then it says sleeve draw now functions as follows. It draws a card and that says Arcanum from your divining deck. So basically, it just draws a card. You cannot draw an Arcanum if you are aligned with its seal of Arcana. So if you are aligned with its seal of Arcana, like the suns or the moons or the uh, circles. So I'm gonna get canceled for that one. In the comment section, remind me what the circles are. <laughs> I just know them as the suns and the circles, oh god. But what you have is that if you're aligned with its current seal of arcanum that basically you can't draw it so let's say that you have suns you can't draw another sun if you're aligned with the sun you can't do it and then when you're aligned with all three seals any arcanum may be drawn though and so what this basically means is that sleeve draw now is just a very consistent how to say it it allows you to be more consistent with your ability to get the three different types of seals is what this basically means and so let's like in an ideal situation you might be like okay i have two arcanum one sun one moon and oh my god i really hope it's a circle i'm so doomed for that saying circle but now you don't need to worry about fishing for a circle this makes it consistent and so 
I think that that will go a ways to actually helping Astrologian just with that consistency factor. Because I think that, especially when you're talking about a lot of new Astrologians, is they're just like, oh my god, I need to somehow get three different seals, or my AoE buff for the entire party is going to be garbage. And so this is going to go a long way to helping. And I think it's something like 2% party buff, 2% party buff, and then it jumps to 5%. So just the consistency factor is going to be a huge boost, I think, for sure. And overall, that is all of the job changes here. I expected this to only be like a five minute video. Who was I kidding? But I guess that's what you get when you actually like flesh out the patch notes rather than just be like, Bleh. so yeah, I hope that this helps people understand what's going on and all of the exciting changes coming. I am so excited to play this and trust me 5.3 hype is so freaking real. Anyhow, that is all for this video. I hope to catch you in the next one and have a fantastic awesome sauce day. Talk to you later.